Welcome to Core Finance, where we're joined by Craig Earlham, who's a senior market analyst at Oanda. How are you today, Craig? I'm very good, Zach. How are you? Are you uh, all like on the edge of your seat waiting for the Fed uh, tonight? Oh, I can't tomorrow. wait. Is it no, it's tonight. It's tonight. It's tonight. Yes, exactly. No, no it's, a two, it's a two day meeting. They did they start? Uh, they started you? yesterday. That's they right, uh, yes. conclude tonight. And uh, but we don't get Janet Yellen's appearance. So that's always my favourite part. So I will be sad that we'll be missing out on uh, on Chair Yellen. Uh, yeah. But I'm sure it'll still be very eventful. I'm sure it will be. Let's have a look at the charts you brought in. And uh, a lot of events here on Brent crude. Um, the Saudis uh, managing to tighten up supply. Um, nothing to do with Aramco, of course. Uh, no, of course not. Why, why would it be? I'm sure the two are uh, mutually, mutually exclusive. Um, yeah, the, I, think, I think one of the, 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 there was the, obviously the meeting on Monday, which seems to have very, very little impact, to be quite honest. What I found most interesting was the report yesterday. I think it was a Bloomberg article they talked about. Um, they showed the data showing Saudi Arabia's exports to the US specifically. Um, and over the last month or two, uh, it's actually fallen by around 450,000 barrels a day on average. Um, to the US, so not not far off halved what they're doing, and it, it, I guess the, the 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 what they're trying to say is that what they're doing is people are paying too much attention to US inventory levels, and while there has been these cuts, um, that they haven't been impacting the, the API and EIA numbers. So it looks like they're actually targeting the US to try and convince markets that these cuts are happening. So you started to feel this more bullishness starting to um, starting to appear, but I think yesterday's API number was the real. Uh, the real trigger uh, that we saw yesterday at around half nine in the UK. That's what took it through $50 a barrel, and that's what suddenly makes this look a lot more bullish now. And again, you've, you've got to take this number uh, on its own to begin with, and it was a 10.2 million drawdown, the biggest since September, so it's a huge figure. But if we see two or three of these in the road, then it may suggest that what the Saudis are doing is actually having an impact, and then it'll be very interesting to see how the markets react. At the moment, we've broken through 50. We've got that little bit of resistance around 50, 80, maybe around 51 with the moving averages. Uh, but should we break through there, then we could be headed back towards those kind of 54, $55 levels. Well, I was, I was um, I'm disappointed that the uh, government ban on petrol and diesel cars in 2040 didn't make any difference to the price of, price of Brent crude. Uh, ne ne neither did uh, Toyota's uh, decision to move more into uh, electric cars from 2022. I mean, it's, it's just unbelievable. It's how like people just aren't paying attention, <laughs> is it? No, they're not. OK, let's go on to uh, uh, a pound a dollar. Yeah, I mean, we're just struggling around that 130 level again. I think this is going to be an interesting day for pound dollar. We've got the UK GDP data at 9.30 this morning, UK time. We're expecting 0.3% growth. Um, I'll be very interested to see, given retail sales over the last few months have actually been quite good uh, because of this warmer weather, people going out and shopping and spending time in restaurants and bars. Um, the whole summer thing. The summer effect. I mean, we've had a heat wave, right? <laughs> a heat wave like no other. Um, so I'm interested to see if that maybe spruces up the figure a lot and gives the, the pound that little bump. We've also, of course, got the Fed this evening, which has the potential to, do, uh, to, to influence the dollar. But the fact that we're trading around these 130s again, unlike, quite often we just see a level, a defined level, 130, 130, 150, 129.50, something like that. But here we seem to be getting around the 130 level and then there seems to be a lot of unease. The one thing that is notable, though, is we are seeing that series of higher lows from early on July um, as we're building up towards these 130s. So if we, it, it, it suggest, suggests to me that momentum is with the balls, and if we can get a good GDP figure, then who knows, maybe we can break through the 131 and push on higher. And I know that like, the next big resistance level, which doesn't really come on this chart, the next big resistance zone is kind of around 134 to 135. I think it's going to take a big push to get that there. But a breakthrough 131 would certainly uh, signal that the market's becoming a lot more bullish, whereas a breakthrough that trend line back through 130 could uh, signal a just continue range-bound trading. Okay, let's go on to dollar-yen. Dollar-yen, we had, we've had this big uh, correction back to 111. Uh, 111 have highlighted previously as a major uh, uh, level for this pair simply because you've got the moving average, 233-day simple moving average, which you can see on these two occasions supported the pair even when it was below the cloud. Um, you've also got the bottom of the cloud itself. Um, and also it's a 61.8% retracement of the move from the recent lows to the highs. So this was always going to be an important rotational point. At the moment we have had a nice bounce off this level, but I think we need to see a break above the kind of 112.50s to 112.25s um, to signal uh, that we may be seeing a bit more of momentum. It's interesting that the lagging line's broken below the cloud before price um, on this occasion, which isn't very common. But should we see a break through those 111s uh, and make new lows, then I think things could certainly start to look a lot more bearish. Okay, but basically a range for this, I mean, it's, you know, obviously it's a 
there's a lot of action there on that chart, but uh, mm. a range between what 109 and 114 over the last uh, few months, really. Yeah, over the last few months and beyond that, we're looking back towards, well, 108, 114, really. And um, there's nothing to say that we would break below 108 should we see a break below the 110.80s, 110.75s, which would be the, uh, see the cloud broken, the fib broken, the moving average broken. But it would certainly be a very bearish signal and would suggest to me that maybe back one of these 109, 108s at the very least. Okay, uh, Craig Earlham, Senior Market Analyst at Oanda, thanks for coming in today. Thank you.